All right, everybody. Well, welcome back. And we have now for you uh, Paul Quezada from Long Beach and possibly joined by his colleague, Jennifer Laris, but they'll be talking about flexibility in, with respect to multimodal delivery for content review. So Paul, take it away. Thank you, Kevin. And hello and good morning, everyone. Again, my name is Paul Quesada, and in the audience is Jennifer Lattice. Uh, we're both instructional designers with CSU Long Beach, and today it's my pleasure to discuss with you what we're referring to as content review, but with an added consideration for multimodal delivery of your course instructional materials. I add this distinction because if we've learned anything in the last couple of years living and teaching remotely in high flex environments, it's that we all benefit from having choices in the ways that we interact with not just course information, but every piece of information we encounter as we navigate through an increasingly digital world. And before moving on, I wanna read this quote and it's one you're already likely familiar with. It reads, I have not failed 10,000 times. I have not failed once. I have succeeded in proving that, these, that those 10,000 ways will not work. When I have eliminated the ways that will not work, I will find the way that will work. Uh, this is of course attributed to Thomas Edison and the accuracy of this quote is up for debate. Uh, but I use this specific version because it accurately captures what is for many a continuous process of trial and error, experimentation, if you will, and one that is required for deep learning and understanding. In this respect, while your students are engaged with the content of the week, they are simultaneously learning about how, to, how they relate to this material and the ways that they can best consume and process all this information. And it is this process of failing and succeeding that serves as a good primer for what follows as part of content review. But as an overview, I'm gonna quickly discuss what content review means for supporting learners in flexible environments. Uh, because when learners are getting started with course materials, this is initially where they need your help the most. Uh, so a faculty-led content review helps to define expectations uh, with your instructional materials, uh, which also helps learners to more thoroughly explore course content. And when multimodal delivery is incorporated, it allows them to reflect on their personal learning preferences. Following that, we'll look at certain we'll look at a certain strategy and how this can look in your own course as you begin delivery of your instructional materials. This will include an emphasis on learner assistive technologies and instructor modeling. And lastly, we're going to look at the benefits that multimodal delivery brings not only to your respective institutions, which can be paying for dedicated learning services and technologies such as Blackboard Ally, uh, but more importantly, to support your learners who can more deeply engage with self-directed learning practices and best fit their needs in today's flexible learning environments and close any hidden gaps in learning equity. As for what content review with multimodal delivery really means, uh, it boils down to setting and establishing learner expectations. Uh, because we should not assume that simply by providing students with links to readings, videos, and other media that they will inherently know what they're expected to do with it. In a flexible course environment that provides multiple pathways to participate and complete activities, students may not know what is required activity and what is simply an alternate pathway. So it's important to explicitly communicate this expectation. Uh, this can include simply indicating if it's required. And one method to help increase this clarity is to use an announcement or a module overview to state what materials must they must review. So whether this is a pre-recorded lecture, a chapter in a textbook, an article, or a podcast, whatever it is, uh, you wanna make sure it's designated as either required or optional so that there's no confusion on this front. This, this also goes for how much is required. Students will appreciate knowing if they do not need to read an entire chapter or watch an entire video. You wanna let them know what aspects of the content are critical for reaching their learning outcomes um, and allow students to better prepare for later coursework um, and or to get ready to enter a profession. And lastly, when it's needed. So if students should review something before a class session, let them know something like, this chapter reading will be used extensively when we meet next Tuesday. Uh, that, that statement alone, um, again, leaves no room for confusion and sets that expectation that they must complete this or complete this content uh, review. And as for collaborative content review, this also allows students to benefit from opportunities where they can interact with their classmates throughout a, a flexible course experience. Uh, there are a number of tools that exist to foster this type of interaction through social or collaborative content. And one of the tools is, a, or one of the uh, strategies here is a collaborative text annotation tool. 
Uh, this allows teachers to students and teachers to read, highlight, and add comments to the same copy of a web page or a web-based PDF document. Uh, teachers can also place prompts at specific points in the text, and students can ask questions or see what passages their classmates collectively highlight the most, which helps foster a social learning process. Tools like Perusal also offer full textbooks that students can read, review, and annotate together. And tools like Microsoft OneDrive or Google Drive allows teachers to create your own files and students uh, and students to review, comment, and or edit together. Uh, in audio, another uh, collaborative tool is uh, focuses more on the audio aspect of, of this material. Uh, and some, so a tool like SoundCloud allows students to listen to web-based audio and add comments or critiques that are attached to specific points in the timeline. Uh, this is very helpful in allowing um, other students to see how their classmates interpret the same information. So again, also contributing to this uh, social learning aspect. And just to get back to expectation setting, you can also adapt a transparent assignment template framework to provide an effective content review prompt. Uh, in this manner, you help learners create a clear connection to content and allows them to answer simple yet profound questions such as, why are you reviewing this particular content? And hopefully they'll be able to connect this material either to a course learning outcome, to the professional field at large, or perhaps even to their own personal lives in the future. The same goes for what do you need to review? Because by knowing what material is quote, must know, learners can better determine which items to focus on and spend more time reviewing. And lastly, this effective prompt also helps learners to answer how can you be most successful in reviewing this content? And this is where I transition to delivering a multimodal content review, because it's here that, that learners can appropriately be introduced to the practice of generating alternative formats that best suit their needs, whether this is for learner preference, uh, learner fatigue in any one modality, or a learning disability rendering certain formats unusable. And with respect to how you can deliver a multimodal content review, this is where we can get creative and, and uh, create a process that will be unique for each of you as this will also depend on the services available at your respective institutions. But as part of this approach, it's important to keep in mind the Universal Design for Learning Framework, which is an educational model that guides the development of flexible learning environments and learning spaces that can accommodate individual learning differences something we've been talking about at length here throughout the Summer Institute and even referring to accessibility just a moment ago. Uh, but in essence, the principles of universal design allow instructors to deploy learning technologies in ways that maximize student engagement, build community, and ultimately lead to successful learning. And one such application of UDL is the use of Blackboard Ally, the accessibility service now enabled in many learning management systems across CSU campuses. The Ally tool, in addition to cross-referencing your instructional materials to make sure they meet web content accessibility guidelines, known as WCAG, also provides the invaluable service of generating alternative formats of said content. So as part of your content review, and particularly at the beginning of instruction, you can demonstrate the, the utility of this tool for learners so that they know this is an option right from the outset of the semester and allows them to better plan how they'll continue to engage with course content all throughout the semester. So as an example, uh, this means, you know, for your first required PDF article reading, seen here on the left as a screenshot, this can be automatically generated as an audio file. And this is seen here on the right. Uh, this thus allowing students to listen to this material, maybe while driving home during a, for a long commute or during a morning run. Uh, the point is that this, content is now delivered in a format that adapts to individual learner preference and best suits their lifestyle. And by the way, this is all done at the discretion of each individual learner. So it's, it's not necessary to, that they request from you, the instructor for this accommodation. And let's now take a moment to listen to an example of this newly generated audio format. Title, Disability Awareness, Training and Empowerment a new paradigm for raising disability awareness on a university campus for faculty, staff, and students. Begin paragraph text, article. Begin heading level okay, one. Okay, I just wanted to play a snippet of it so you, you, yeah, you can hear you know, what that sounds like. And 
while students may not find the voice to be the most exciting, um, it's also not so overly robotic that they're distracted from the actual content. And this is just one such example of an alternative format. However, as previously mentioned, there, there can be numerous other flexible learning technologies integrated into your LMS, and this will vary across each institution. But additional examples of such other technologies include ReadSpeaker, which is a comprehensive text-to-speech service that helps increase reading comprehension. And for a similar text-to-speech service tool that's available natively within Canvas, there's the Microsoft Immersive Reader service that students can enable right from within their own accounts if it's not already by default. And being shared in the chat is a resource that provides navigational support and instructions uh, for using this, this learning tool. But ultimately, I do suggest that you consult with your appropriate department uh, supporting academic technologies for a comprehensive list of such enabled services. And it is by introducing the different modalities available to your learners during your content review that you are also influencing and normalizing the use of services such as alternative formats. Text-to-speech um, allows allow students to engage in a modality that perhaps they had never considered exploring before. So in short, you're looking to kick things off with an awareness campaign because often students don't know how to explore some of these dedicated learning services uh, as, that I previously, previously mentioned. Because if, if you as a subject matter expert are not using them, then how can we expect learners to make the same approach in a high flex modality? So I ask rhetorically, of course, because I wanna remind everyone here that I want to remind everyone of the influence that you have on student behavior when engaging with your course content. So if you're utilizing these tools at the outset of instruction during a content review at the beginning of, of the semester, then students will know that, again, these are options available to them as well and something that they'll be leveraging in, in learning and consuming all this material. And here, I just want to take a moment to highlight just some of the benefits of delivering content review with a multimodal consideration. Uh, because not only are you increasing the utility uh, and usage of learning technologies integrated into your site's LMS, uh, which always help to justify the costs, but you are also helping to increase learning equity for everyone in your classroom. So you're able to meet and engage different learning styles. You can accommodate those with learning disabilities. You're promoting learner agency. You're increasing uh, learner choices for content and the, way that this, and the ways that they engage with the material and you're helping promote and, and create self-directed learning opportunities. Uh, all of these are, have, have been shown to increase learner motivation, attain higher scores, and improve course completion rates. And for me, this really aligns with the Edison quote I opened up with, because by allowing learners to experiment with different ways that do not work, they will find the one that does work for them. And that's what flexible learning is all about. And that's all I have to present. Sorry if I went through that pretty fast, but for my last slide, I'd like to close with a reflection and a discussion activity. Um, so I'd, I'd like to ask that each of you reflect and answer either one of the two questions. This can be either in the chat or you can feel free to unmute. Um, but the questions are here, what are some strategies that help you address learning equity during content review? Um, because maybe you have your own approach that you find works really well with students. And how are you addressing learner fatigue and any one modality? And uh, I also just want to ask because I want to help bring in some of your experiences here in this session. So does anyone have anything to, to share on that front? I'm going to look at the chat. Oh, thank you, Kevin, for incorporating that in the chat. You bet. And since we have just about one minute left, I'll type the second one and then maybe we can um, have people answer while we get the next person lined up to go. Okay, sounds good. And I'm seeing I showed students how I use text to speech in Google Chrome. That's a Perfect example. Yeah, students need to, again, it's kind of creating that awareness of how you're utilizing, especially a subject matter expert, someone whom they've already, you know, who's, who's, who they see as the authority in this subject. And so if you're using the Google speech, you know, uh, the Chrome extension, then this is, they see the value of doing the same them, themselves. Okay, Google speech. Yeah, I'm seeing Google is a pretty popular tool. And, and yeah, I think just modeling what that, that can look like for students, um, again, helps normalize it. And here, I'll stop.
And okay, I'm also seeing a, a read out loud in Adobe Acrobat, perfect. Yeah, I think again, it's just creating the awareness so that, that students know that this is a, a perfectly acceptable avenue uh, for engaging with, with course materials. And as a learner, it helps to know that materials presented will be available after the session. Materials later. Yeah, that's also a good expectation setting. Yeah, so that way students know, you know, again, when they'll need to know this information. And again, allowing you to have that focus in the classroom. So you're making good use of valuable class time. So thank you, Gabriela. These are all good thoughts. And uh, so I wanna thank you, Paul, for presenting these great ideas and focusing us on reflecting on our own work and practices. Uh, and I invite everyone to keep the conversation going in the chat while Dr. Tolu Noah gets ready for her presentation. Thank you, everyone. All right, I'm good. Super, I'm gonna start, I'm gonna stop and then start the recording. Sorry, Teresa, we'll have a clip to do.